Now, our next speaker is showing how, can you, how you can use data to fix the world. There is nothing artificial about this woman's intelligence. She is the reigning queen of Israeli machine learning. Please welcome eBay Israel's Director of Data Science, Kira Rodinsky. I want to share with you my journey inside data science. It was around 2010. We were all PhD students. It was just the beginning of the new years. And just before the ball was about to drop in New York Times Square, 5,000 birds fall out of the sky, all dead. When everybody started investigating it, they noticed that there's no disease, no harm. The birds that all committed suicide. The timing was very weird. This was exactly when the mind calendar was about to end. But for me, I thought about how can we explain all this phenomena? I had access to everything people were searching on Google, of course, anonymized. And I looked at how people are searching for birds' death along the years. And I've noticed that in 2011, there's a spike in how people are searching for birds' death. But the most interesting thing, it's not the first time. It happened before in Austin and Norway and other countries. The story doesn't end here for BB Arkansas. Just a few days later, 100,000 fish wash out to the shore, all dead. And if you look at how people are searching for fish death along the time, you see that the spikes in searches usually happen together. Again, it happened in Austin, it happened in Norway. But when you look at how people were discussing these issues back then, they say there is no relation between birds' deaths and fish death. Animals just tend to commit suicide together. And I was thinking, maybe there is something in the way people are searching, maybe a month before, three months before, six months before, that correlates really well when people are searching for fish death and birds' death. So I built the system that was looking for the statistically significant searches, and I identified only one thing that was in common. In all of those places, people were searching six months before this for oil spills. Now, we do understand if an oil spill happens now, why fish and birds are going to die now. But why does it happen six months after the oil spill? When I was talking to a friend of mine, she's a biologist, she told me, well, this is a very well-known phenomena. Well, cause number one for fish death is oxygen depletion. And cause number one for oxygen depletion is oil spills. It, uh, it just takes three to six months to get to a level of oxygen in the water where animals just suffocate. And then I started thinking, how can we take this knowledge of causality that my friend, the biologist, just had it like that? How can we mimic and build the ultimate artificial intelligence system that not only sees correlations, but also understands causality? For this, I started taking everything humanity has written. So we had access for 150 years of New York articles, billions of tweets, millions of web searches. We even went to encyclopedias at the beginning of the previous century. And we started building a system that tries to read all of this information. So it would take sentences like, tanker and merchant ship collide, do deep natural language processing on it, understand who did the action, what was the action, and what it was performed and where, and look for signals in the text that actually talk about an experiment somebody did. So in this case, a reporter actually said this caused an oil spill off Singapore. Behind the scene, we started creating a graph of 300 million nodes and billions of edges, representing everything humanity knows about causality. At that time, I was working with the Gates Foundation, and Ebola was just breaking out in Africa. This was 2013. And they asked, well, Ebola didn't happen many times in human beings. It didn't happen a few dozen times in animals. Can we try to explain what is the pattern that happens before an Ebola outbreak? We looked at this graph, and we noticed in all of those dozens of cases of Ebola outbreaks in animals, they all had the same pattern. And what I love about this story, it's a very biblical story. It turns out that all the Ebola outbreaks started when people were greedy and looking for diamonds and gold. 
The system knows that when people are looking for diamonds and gold, deforestation is about to happen. The system knows that when deforestation happens, animals are going to migrate, but specifically one type of animal, the bat. And indeed, the latest Ebola outbreak that killed more than 2,000 people started from a three-year-old child who ate an uncooked bad bush meat. We thought about taking the system to a new level and try to identify both correlations and causations and predict many types of other disease outbreaks like cholera. Cholera is a waterborne disease, so it's a well-known fact that some storms can cause cholera. But we all know that not all storms can cause this. Our system identified that the storms that caused the cholera Two years before that, there was a news article reporting about the very significant drought. This was a score based on just a few cases in Angola, but in Bangladesh, 1960 till today, 19 significant cases of cholera, 84% of them have exactly this pattern. But this pattern doesn't happen anywhere else in Europe, doesn't happen in the United States, doesn't happen here in Israel. So what is so special about Angola and Bangladesh? So you're all probably thinking, well, this is very poor countries, maybe the sewage system is not well. I'm going to ask you one question. How do you even know they're poor? Where did you read about this? Who told you that? It turns out it's just common knowledge. You maybe saw it on the news, maybe your parents told you when you were five. The problem with artificial intelligence, it doesn't have this minimal common sense. It cannot abstract the knowledge like you all do. But for this, we gave it access to thousands of different data sets. The most common one between them is Wikipedia. And we let the system think about different hypotheses. Maybe this happens in areas with population density of some sort, maybe certain government types, area total. And it turns out that only two parameters really matter, the GDP and the percent of water. In April 2011, the system reads the following news article about a drought happening in Cuba, and it starts alerting about a potential cholera outbreak. Cholera didn't happen in Cuba for 130 years, so we didn't think about this too much. But a year and a half later, in August 2012, tropical storms are hitting Cuba. The system is giving a much higher probability for a cholera outbreak. We talk with the organizations, and indeed, in January 2013, it's the first cholera outbreak in Cuba in 130 years. Now, cholera is a disease that kills 100,000 people every year. But it's very simple to treat. If you get clean water in time, mortality rates drop from 50% to less than one. So all these organizations needed is an ability to direct the aid to those locations two to three months in advance. So this system wasn't built to just predict cholera outbreaks or certain diseases. So we were able to predict riots. We predicted the first Sudan riot after the gas prices rise in 2013. We built an entire company called Sales Predict, who was doing the same thing in commerce, who was acquired by eBay. And at that time, I met a Nobel Prize winner in economy back when I was working in Microsoft Research. And he suggested, you know, a Nobel Prize winner thinks about one hypothesis. And if it works, after 20 years, you get a Nobel Prize. Can we build a system that thinks about thousands of hypotheses a second? Maybe one of them is going to be worthy enough. At that point, I decided to focus on bringing this into the healthcare field as well. I started working with one of the largest HMOs here in Israel called Maccabi, with access to 20 million visits for the last uh, 15 years. And we were trying to identify drugs which were purposed for one thing, and maybe they can be used for a completely different reason. And we started finding thousands of those drugs. We identified a drug for hypertension that can treat diabetes. We identified drugs that help your stomach that actually reduce hypertension. The system would also read medical articles and completely explain this. We also identified drugs, one of the most common ones, taking by 25% of the population, above the age of 50, which actually not only correlates, but actually causes Parkinson's. We then moved on to a completely different challenge. Can we generate a drug from scratch? We let the system look at all the drugs till the 30s, and we told it, make adaptations to them, and see if you can create a new one. 
And out of the 1,000 drugs the system generates, 35 are actual drugs that we examined in the past FDA up to today. One of the most common ones is the perzomonide. It's a drug for tuberculosis made in the 30s, but it was toxic and didn't go to the market. The system made 60% changes to its molecular structure, creating what's today called azonazide, the number one drug for tuberculosis. While I was doing all this, I was thinking, well, all of this is just proof of concept. There's such a long process till we create an actual drug, although we did all the clinical trials. Can we treat something we all see all the time? Can we look at the emergency rooms that are completely overcrowded with a shortage of 100,000 doctors? How can we leverage artificial intelligence to completely change this? So we gathered this 27 million visits in primary care, 4 million visits in emergency rooms, and we built an AI system running today in four hospitals here in Israel. It's running uh, in trials both in uh, New York, starting in the east, saving approximately 12 minutes per patient, per doctor. The system identifies the medical record of the patient, asks them questions, and identifies who looks like this patient in the past. Can we predict what they have and direct them through the hospital system and maybe potentially save their lives? Thanks so much.